Oh, Travis Wayne gets out. Oh, I uh, attempted to run. I didn't get very far, and I expected that. Nine months of not running, being incarcerated at the shelter, having tested positive twice for COVID, an RSV, and uh, was drug poisoned with the sickness. <sighs> it takes its toll. Plus my uh, age is also a factor as uh, I had previously been professionally trained in athletics so that such laps you know, is like the greater you are the harder you fall so yeah it was a pretty big fall but we're starting back up again I'm still standing there we go I noticed uh, YouTube shows the content of the video links now it's all good you can see the uh, musical him in the description below uh, I found out that there's something very disturbing going on with my credit card <laughs> uh, and so another independent source has rejected my credit card and uh, and so I checked my account everything's fine no, it's not. So, yeah, I'll have to go in shopping late today. So I can ask them what the hell. And it could be the new month. Uh, don't ask me why. But <laughs> I tend to have computer glitches that cause us problems and uh, since I have to go it's quicker to go to uh, the super smiths rather than the other smiths we'll be getting in the habit of going there anyway but it will be later in the morning so I I, I don't no, maybe Mormons don't do this anymore. Maybe it's not a thing. But when uh, I started seminary, I started with the brand new edition of the quad. With the footnotes and the Bible dictionary, topical guide. And so we were instructed on how to use the footnotes in our study of the scriptures. And, uh, and so I was that first wave of the first generation, the elite. And uh, that's also an uh, interesting uh, feature of my having worked on the, the second revision of the footnotes for the Spanish editions with the guide to the scriptures. And... Uh, and so that was a, not only was I the youngest in the top committees, there was one woman who was younger than I was, but she only worked on the lesser committees that I started with. She wasn't uh, uh, able to prove herself as a scriptorian of Mormonism as I was, but for her to be there was still impressive enough because they pick the people we don't apply saying hey I'd like to serve with the footnote committee and revise the footnotes I've got lots of ideas no they don't care about your ideas if you send them your ideas they'll file it away in the trash 
<laughs> they don't care about you. They don't care about anybody. They get assignments from the president of the church, and then they carry them out. And they look for the people. So, being their friend is helpful, but you also have to convince them that you're good for the job. So you have to be smart, at least in Mormonism terms. <clears throat> and I, I don't know, maybe the church has turned you off from us, who make the manuals, who, you know, put in the footnotes for the scriptures, that, uh, you know, we're looking beyond the mark. And so you're just going to gloss over them until you feel the spirit. I, it just, it's completely contrary to the way I was taught to study the scriptures. Read, ponder, pray, get a feeling, you're done. That was never taught to us. Never. Not even Moroni chapter 10 verses 3 through 5. Because there's that whole word manifest. It sort of throws a wrench in the spiritual witness theory. But again, it requires that Mormons have a level of literacy to be able to comprehend the words and the grammatical sentence structure. If you screw those up, you get alternate realities, alternate interpretations. And I can understand the Bible being difficult because you assume that because the church is keeping it English with the worst translation ever, and despite the article of faith number eight, we believe the Bible to be the word of God as far as it is translated correctly. And so Mormons assume that we've fixed it by putting in the Greek and Hebrew translations to correct certain words. Not quite. There's more to be done, and even those that are in there are wrong. Let God prevail, oh dear God. Chief cornerstone of the cornerstone, oh dear God. And I had fixed those, but they chose not to accept them. As the video I did the other day in Matthew for the New Testament lesson, yeah, they accepted that one. It was simple, it was easy, it was to the point. It was putting in the Isaiah quote reference, source reference, in the Matthew, because it was missing from the original version. So yeah, they did put that in that I put in for them. And so I even had a class at Rick's College on how to study the scriptures, and it was very intense. It's what study should be. As uh, he had uh, informed us that, you know, you need to know Greek, and so Strong's Concordance was recommended, but no, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I, but uh, having uh, a knowledge of the original Greek and the original Biblical Hebrew is essential to understanding the translations. And, uh, uh, and then a cultural understanding of the time periods that are involved is also essential. And so there was a book that he had recommended as textbook for us. And so as we would go through the, the scriptures for even the Book of Mormon, many of the class being taught in seminary only, and Sunday school and whatever had difficulty getting correct answers even me on Book of Mormon questions to understand whether or how we understand scriptures and so if my generation had trouble and you guys don't even do the type of study that we did No wonder I'm having trouble reaching the younger generations. And so, when I point out scriptures for you, I guess I'm assuming you know how to study. And I'm wrong. You don't. And so, 
let's go to uh, Joseph Smith history section one it shouldn't be a section there is no chapters it's just one and in verse 40 you, know, you, you know the bigger context seminary at least taught us that I don't know if they're doing that anymore the historical background <clears throat> but Nephi comes to Joseph Smith oh right you also have to use the Joseph Smith papers because Willard Richards tampered with the documents and so as Gerald and Sandra Tanner pointed out yes Brigham Young ordered Willard Richards and others to tamper with Joseph Smith's documents alter them and so the church finally acknowledged that yes that was the case that uh, the, what we read in our scriptures is not the original from Joseph Smith and so the Joseph Smith papers are now online available for you and you're not using it you're still trusting the incorrect information and thus you're getting wrong conclusions for your scripture study so it's Nephi not Moroni but Moroni's on all of the temples because of this. Yeah, I know. And what does it mean when somebody lies to you? Are they somebody you want to listen to and follow? The answer is no. And so, Nephi is telling him about the prophecies of the latter days. That Joseph Smith is going to set things in motion to warn and prepare Mormons for those latter days. And oopsie, Brigham Young ordered them to be altered so that Mormons would not know of when they're going to happen. And they're the true church how? but he quoted the third chapter of Acts 22nd and 23rd verses precisely as they stand in our New Testament and yeah they put the footnote down at C you're supposed to put it at the beginning of the quote so right before they is where it should be <coughs> if not at Acts 22nd and 23rd verses in the third chapter that would have been a big clue but it's already written in the text so it seems kind of moot to even put a footnote in there at all but nonetheless you're supposed to go to it you're not just supposed to quote this passage in addition to these he quoted the 11th chapter of Isaiah saying that it was about to be fulfilled what was about to be fulfilled do we know what was about to be fulfilled? Did you even check? Did it get fulfilled in Joseph Smith's day, or is it supposed to be in our day? What is it? What's in that passage? Well, you got to follow the footnote. Isaiah 11, verse 10, and then they put the 1 through 16. Our job was to try to identify the pertinent verses and eliminate the parentheses. <clears throat> but then Acts he said that it was precisely as they stand in our New Testament but this isn't an Old Testament prophecy it's the New Testament so Joseph Smith even taunts you to study it to follow the links And they didn't have footnotes in those days and so you're supposed to find out who this Christ is he said that that prophet was Christ if you're just going to assume Jesus when we've already established that the church lies to us that it's not the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Willard Richards changed it 
Joseph Smith papers. But the day had not yet come when they who would not hear his voice should be cut off, precisely as they stand in the New Testament. If you don't check Acts, you're not going to understand that it's not cut off. And if you don't know what it is from the Greek, you're not going to see what Joseph Smith is doing in the context in verses before and after. He adds something to Malachi, and then he puts in that he's going to be destroyed if he shows the plates to anybody else. Utterly destroyed is the translation from the Greek. Not cut off. Not the passage from Deuteronomy, which Acts is referring to. And it has Deuteronomy in here, so you can skip Acts and go straight to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. And it should be 15 through 19, not 15, but, you know. <coughs> but again, if you don't know how to study your scriptures, you're not going to figure this out. And so do you want to be utterly destroyed by not hearkening to your Christ in the latter days? Apparently. That's what's so disturbing about you guys. So, let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Okay, so this is the record of Jesus, literal history of Jesus during the Roman period of time. What? No, it's not. It is written during the Roman period of time, but that's higher level learning. It requires science. But uh, it's an author claiming to be Moses. We learn from this that Moses is not a literal historical person. He's an apocalyptic literary figure. Book of Revelation, Apocalypse. And so he's now telling us that there will be a man like Moses in the future who the people must hearken to. And I just went over from Joseph Smith. Mormons are supposed to hearken to him. So how are we going to know? I mean, he's not the president of the church. That makes it very clear. So who do we listen to? How do we know he's the one that we're supposed to hearken to? Because he's our Christ. But wait, Jesus is our Christ. And again, historical background. What's the historical background of the creation of Jesus? Exactly. You didn't do your study with verse 19 of Joseph Smith history. The first creed of Christianity that Joseph Smith is told is an abomination. Hmm, the creation of Christianity is an abomination? Why? They preach Jesus. And they're also anti-Semitic. That's why they're an abomination. And so if you do not understand that this is Jewish literature, this isn't Christian literature, you're not so supposed to impose Christian interpretation on Jewish literature. This should have been a no-brainer to all of us. But the church is independent. They're in the gap between Jewish and Christian. And so we're the one true interpretation, right? Well, it would be if we trusted Joseph and not the church. Because Joseph uses Jewish interpretation, but then adds and says, hey, guess what? He's going to be a Mormon. But the church won't link you to it in their footnotes. You have to do your study on your own and then happen to come across it and go, Oh, I remember doing study on the man like Moses. That's interesting. This is the man like Moses. Wait a minute. Joseph says he's a Mormon. 
he's human, not supernatural Jesus, created as an abomination. Yeah, section 103. I just, I'm doing the same videos over and over again for you, just in a different manner of presentation. Hoping one of these ways will click for you. Therefore, I will raise up. Oh, exactly the same. That's how you do study. You look for patterns. So I did the Book of Mormon Exodus patterns. I did the Bible Exodus patterns. Why would I do that? The man like Moses, who shall lead them like his Moses, unto my people, the Mormons, was involved in an exodus. This man like Moses is going to be involved in an exodus of Mormons. For ye, Mormons, are the children of Israel. And Mormons must be led out of bondage. Are you in bondage? You don't think so, do you? <laughs> you pay your tithing regularly, and you don't see that you're in bondage. We're doing fine. I freely give my tithing to the church. Do you? Really? I dare you to stop paying your tithing and let your bishop know you're not paying tithing anymore. And see what happens. What rank are you in the priesthood? Let's see how that changes instantly. Oh, you wanted to go to the temple? Let's see if that changes instantly. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, we're in bondage. And I just did the whole thing over the Family Discovery Day weekend, the Hold Your Family Hostage Day. You have to pay in order to save your family. You're paying the ransom money. Wow! But are you caring? Nope. Uh, it's the church. Jesus. Jesus wants us to do it, and so it's okay. <sighs> there are things so blatantly obvious that when you don't see it, the rest of the world sees it, and they call you crazy. They call you indoctrinated into a cult. Now, do you understand why people say Mormonism is a cult? Do you understand now? Because you're crazy. You're not catching the clues that are blatantly obvious. So do you want to be crazy? Do you want to be a part of a cult? Yeah! Dear God. And so, 16, it refers you to the Exodus account. It refers you to Mosiah 7, which would have been a Moses Exodus account. Alma 36, 28, Moses Exodus account. Section 10791. Ooh, that's interesting. How did that get in there? <laughs> Notice that with this link, what it now teaches you about who this Mormon is. The footnotes must be carefully done and correctly done. And it's partially correct, but it's purposely done to leave out Deuteronomy. So that it, you only think, and again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. Oh, Nelson's the man like Moses, right? <sighs> oh my God! We know him by his fruits. The SEC fined the church for tithing financial violations. They failed to report the stock market. It's an automatic, not true church. And Mormons don't care. That's the sad thing. Because they looked to the church and the church said, nothing to see here. Move along. We're doing what we're doing. Problems fixed. It's a settlement, not a fine. <clears throat> so this is why I keep harking on Nelson. Behold, there is wisdom, yea, to be a seer, a revelator, 
a translator and a prophet. If Nelson had these keys, he would not be making the errors that he's making at the pulpit of conference for word after word after word after word after word that he's claiming to be able to translate. He even confessed with the Let God Prevail that he didn't translate it. It was the BYU scholars in Hebrew who said, hey, you can use this. <laughs> and they set him up. Oh my God. The BYU scholars of Hebrew deceived Nelson, lied to him about a false translation, one that is used by white supremacists, by the way, to have him get up at the pulpit of conference and give Mormons the false translation of Israel. It is Israel, right? Yeah. Jacob turns into Israel. <clears throat> it's Yah, Prince of God. What? A prince of God? What? That means he will one day ascend to the throne to become the king of God. Princes become kings. But who's this Yah guy? Oh my God! And so, yeah, if you don't know your scriptures, if you don't know how to study, if you don't actually study, if you think that the church is telling you, well, they are telling you, to do the minimal, to read, ponder, pray, get a feeling you're done, you're never, ever going to know correctly what the scriptures are trying to tell you about. Not the Bible, not the Book of Mormon, not the Doctrine and Covenants, not the Pearl of Great Price, not other scriptures that were not approved by who? Yeah, the Great and Abominable Church of Constantine, not of Brigham Young. And so you're not making the connections. Brigham Young was not the great and abominable Christ of the great and abominable church. That's ridiculous. He's a true prophet of God who told him to be racist and sexist and bigoted and neglect the poor and to be an anti-Semite. And in 1978, Jesus told the president of the church that it, we're no longer racist. And so we're not racist. I have many friends who are black. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, you're just the butt of jokes, Mormons. The butt of jokes. People make fun of you. That menace to society TikTok group that spent all that time at BYU interviewing co-eds about their racism and making them public worldwide? They've got millions of views and followers? You're the butt of jokes because you don't study, because you don't catch on that this is the great and abominable church and you're supposed to be rescued from it. But you're not even looking for your savior. You're looking for Jesus, who's coming in the coming days. Because Nelson said so. Why would he lie? So, yeah. It was intended to be, Jesus. does Jesus fulfill prophecy of Jesus? And it turned into something else. So I still have that video to do now.